very different since I work here. Look up. And if you can't see it, look at the slide. <laughs> see the dome above you. The painted dome ceiling of the Isaac Theatre Royale was built in 1908 by G.C. Post from the Carrara Ceiling Company in Wellington. It is the biggest artwork from Edwardian time in Australasia. The historian Ian Lockerhead say that it represents a promise of a magic to come. Only 20 years after the theater was built, the interior was extensively remodeled. The original design that included real gold leaf application was covered with paint. Since then, they have painted the theater interior three times with different colors and bronze paint. In the earthquake 2010 and 2011, as you know, we almost lost a lot. But the theater directors were determined to save the, the building. And thanks to them and to the people who generously donated funds, we can now enjoy this stunning venue. Thank you. It also represents the completion of one of the most challenging projects I have worked on in the last 30 years of experience in the field. The first time I saw the Dome was in April 2013. It was a freezing day with no folly on the hills of Christ, around Christchurch. The auditorium was being slowly deconstructed after the Christchurch earthquake. The dome has been removed from its original position, right in white Tyvek, and suspended over the stage. The structure of the dome was reinforced in steel, and it now weighed 11 tons. Don't say, oh good, all, the, all well restored. Our work included the restoration and the conservation of the painting and the central plaster rosette of the dome, the research of the original colors and the regilding of the old and new plaster decoration of the interior, the restoration of the marble staircase in the foyer. We also consulted on the final treatment of the front facade, facade of the Isaac Theatre Royale. But today, I will talk only about the dome. The dome has a timber frame, which holds a metal mesh to which the plaster is applied. 85 square meter of painted canvas are attached to the plaster in eight unequal segments. When we began, we found extensive damage on the painted canvas. Large area of the painting had detached from, from the plaster, and the heat of the previous lighting system had burned most of the edges. Our initial plan was the local reattachment of the painted canvas, but we found out very quickly that that was not going to be possible. So we decided instead to remove the canvas and reattach it. When we removed the painting, we found that the rear of the canvas had a large quantity of plaster and adhesive, all of which needed to be removed and we needed to expand the team. And I remember that 30 years ago, working post earthquake Italy, we found that there was a lot to do, and many people unemployed. At the time, 
the Italian government decided to create a new, new project to allow the community to participate in a restoration under our supervision. In Christchurch, we decided to do the same thing. So we, we, by inviting locals to come and help in cleaning the rear of the canvases under our direction. We made an announcement in Facebook, and in less than one day, we had a dressmaker, two students, three artists, happy to spend two months in cleaning the rear of the canvases. When we took the painting off the dome, we found that the plaster was all cracked and crumbling. This meant it wasn't suitable anymore to be reattached and used as a support. So we had to figure out how we're going to recreate a new support which would have, have few key characteristics. It needed to be lightweight and fully reversible. It needed to be exactly the same shape of the dome, and it needed to be durable. Hmm. While we were looking for alternatives, the American Cup Yacht Race was on, and we got an idea. We could create a new support with carbon fiber. It could be cast exactly the same shape of the original handmade plaster dome. Carbon fiber is very strong. It can be formed to any curvature. Its thickness would make very little impact to the overall geometry. And here, in New Zealand, we have the world leaders in this technology. But this, it would also be the first time that this technique was going to be used to reattach large painted canvas. We found, the name, we found a man named Devin Norris, who works in a local boat builder, uh, boat, boat building, um, in the boat, so, sorry, local boat in industry, and arranged to meet. As we slowly explained to David what we wanted to do, I'm sure he thought sometime, I thought he, he thought that we might be crazy. But the longer we talk, and the more excited we become about the whole idea, and an innovative collaboration was created between boat builders, art conservators, and scientists. My colleagues from Italy supported the project by testing for an appropriate adhesive that can be bring into New Zealand. After all the testing, we thought we were ready to start. But then, the European factory told us that the adhesive, which was working perfectly, was no longer available. <laughs> we cried it. The testing process became all over again. Two weeks later, we had found a new adhesive, and we were ready to start. The carbon fiber were made by the boat builders, and then our team of six technicians moved with the paintings at the David Norris boat factory in Christchurch for two months. Before the carbon fiber panels could be used, they needed to be cured in a very large oven. David adopted an existing one to create a custom make to measure oven, which would be six and a half by three and a half meters. Each panel went inside the oven three times. This was necessary to heat the adhesive, but it could only happen one, um, after, after we had sucked the hair from between the various layer, layers to make sure the canvas glued flat. Art conservation ethics required that everything we do to a work of art should be reversible in case one day 
we can come up with a, a better alternative. So the artwork was protected by two layers, or is protected by two layers of synthetic canvas between the original and the carbon fiber. Once all the, the canvas were attached to the new support panels, we cleaned the surface of the original painting and we cut the edges of the carbon fiber to the exact shape of the canvas. We then bro brought the panel back to the theater for the final installation and retouching. It was only at this point that we got to see if it all fit back together again. <laughs> we were slightly nervous because the shape of the dome was complex and the process took a long time. As you might imagine, there was potentially a high chance of error. Also, there was no way for us to carry out a test once we were committed to remounting the canvases. When the large canvas panel returned to the theater, the dome had been already shifted from the stage to the auditorium over there where you're sitting now. I couldn't wait to install the first two panels. This was the moment where we would find out if our measurements were correct. Imagine my relief when they all fit perfectly. <laughs> Fantastico. <laughs> Thank you. Just above my head is the first painting that was um, that there's, there's been attached, and also the most elaborate of them all. The panel number seven over there, in the contrary, is considered an unfinished painting. The artist maybe ran out of time or money. Once the panel were all fitted, the dome was lifted back to its final position. With the scaffolding erected, we regilded the outside of the dome and the plaster rosette. It was only at this point that the true beauty of the artwork was re revealed in its entirety. Each element depends on the other to create the whole. For too many years, the original intention of the, of the designer was covered by monochromatic paint. The challenge for me was to discover how the theater used to look and make it shine again. Degratification de was in seeing that I was not the only one who felt in that way. The joy is in the reaction of everyone who comes to see the Isaac Theatre Royale in, her, in all her restored beauty. And the idea is that some things worth saving. Thank you, Chiora, e grazie.